we have got the main bones of the greenhouse up and ready to go. Come with us as we show you exactly how we did it. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and I am standing in front underneath the new production greenhouse. We were here just, I don't know, a couple of days, a week ago when we were putting in the anchor post and we have gotten so much work done in really about three and a half days. So we're going to go through and I am going to show you exactly what we did, um, the process that it took to get to this point now. If you will remember, we are building a brand new production greenhouse here at Creekside Nursery. This will house um, really the vast majority of our annuals for this year um, to sell both at the nursery and online. This structure is the exact same size dimensions as the one that we already have that is right next door. This is going to be 30 feet wide, 72 feet long. A lot of you have asked where we are getting these greenhouses from. We get them from Atlas Greenhouses in Georgia. They do a fantastic job. This basically is what you would call like a greenhouse kit. All of the pieces come with it. Everything is marked. We have great directions. Um, so we just really, as long as you can follow directions, then you can put a greenhouse together. So we love Atlas Greenhouses and we've gotten both of these from them. Um, here we are. So let's just go through and walk through the whole process that, like I said, that it took us to get to this point. Last time we were here, we showed you um, that we were putting in the anchor post. So the anchor post will come over here. The anchor post basically are the footings of the greenhouse. It is, does exactly what it says that they do. They anchor the whole greenhouse in here. These posts were 72 inches long, tall, and they are spaced four foot on center all the way through um, on both lengths of the greenhouse. So we got these in here, got them sunk in here. Jerry had to pound away to get them in here. Um, they are all perfectly in line with each other and they are all level. That is just whether you're building a greenhouse or you're building a deck or you're building anything structure wise, being level is probably one of the most foundational Ha, huh. foundational uh, components that you have to have is make sure it is level and it is secure. These are very secure because they are concreted into the ground. Again, imagine this post is 72 inches tall, long, and this is all that is sticking up. So that much is in the ground and it is concreted. So this greenhouse is not gonna go anywhere. They are in. Then what we had to do, we, and we think, oh, this will be like super easy. We'll just slap it on there and move on to the next thing, is the hat base. The hat base is this metal um, runner that you see that goes down the length of both sides of the greenhouse. This greenhouse will have roll-up sides just like the one next door to me. The hat base is what the curtain will rest on when it is in the down position. On this greenhouse, it is manual. We have to roll them up. Jerry has to roll them up manually that you see right here. So this um, bar runs the whole length of the greenhouse. This is the handle. So he has to manually crank it to raise them up to here. This greenhouse is gonna be automated where that it'll be controlled by temperature. We set a temperature, whatever we choose to do, and the sides will raise and lower depending on that temperature. Because of that, being automated, they have the metal hat base. On the other one, it is wooden. So this is where we thought, oh, well, this will be really simple. We'll just stick it up there, nice and easy peasy. It was not. One, I don't, first time we've done it, so every time the first time you do something, it takes a little longer to figure it out. Um, again, because it is metal, it has to be perfectly level from front to back of the greenhouse. So we were working with that, which is interesting. Our very back corner is our highest corner, and then the front is lower um, elevation-wise than the back. 
So back there, it was really in the ground. We had to dig out some ground to put it on. And then here we have actually some, um, some space between the ground and the hat base. Then they were supposed to overlap because these are in sections. These are probably in 12 foot sections. They overlap by three inches. And we thought, oh, well, they'll just lay on top of each other. Well, they didn't. They were really hard to do. And poor Jerry, like he was kicking it. He was using the rubber mallet that we're using for the patio, doing everything he could to get those two pieces when they overlapped to be flush with each other. So we struggled through, we got both sides done. And then wouldn't you know it, as soon as we get over to the other side, um, we were all looking at it and I was like, hey guys, what is this little notch right here? Well, lo and behold, there was a notch on each end where one was supposed to go on top of the other. That was not in the directions. And so we figured it out. So we had to take down all of them, redo them. Then they fit much nicer, snugger on top of each other. Um, and so we redid it. The whole thing about putting the hat bases on, I think, took like four hours to do, which we were thinking, oh, it'll just slap up and go easy. But, you know, such is life. It's all right. So the hat bases were on. And then after that, then we came and we were working on the purlins. So the purlins on this greenhouse, there are five of them. Um, the purlins are what runs the whole length. They connect all the, um, oh, I forgot, the bows. I'm getting way ahead of myself. I didn't even talk about the bows, y'all. Good night. So after we got the anchor, so forget the hat base. Okay. I got, sorry, got all messed up. Hat base, first. hat base, hat base was first and then the bows. Okay. So Jerry's helping me keep straight. There's just so much going on that you forget. Like it all just gets jumbled up in your brain. And we did this in three and a half days. We had Andrew, he was available. So we took him from like nine to five every day. And so the three of us did this together. Okay, so the hat base did go on, then it was the bows. So the bows are obviously, it's kind of like the, um, give the whole greenhouse its structure. And they came in three pieces. So you have the two arches on the side and then you have the, the peak in the middle. This was a whole family event. So my mama came up for a little bit. Jackson was up here. The girls were up here. Um, we were all working together. So you haul them up here. You assemble them, the three pieces right here on the flat ground. Then you have to, in order to connect those pieces together, Jerry has to use the self-tapping screws, which this is, of course, is steel. So it's really, you know, really sturdy. So those self-tapping screws, you think again, oh, they'll just go in, not so much. He really had to muscle them in. So those are screwed together. Then once they were screwed together, we had to, Jerry was on the far end. Andrew and I were on this end. So they're laying down. So you have to pick them up and then take them back. And so Andrew and I would be on this side. So you have to take them and slide them down into this pole. Um, the fellas had gone ahead and there is a, a nut a screw and a nut right here. This simply is what this bow rests on. So right here, Jerry went through and he was putting the bolts in and Andrew was coming back and putting the nuts in. So this bow sits on top of this bolt. So I, we would put this end in and then Jerry was on the other end having to lift it up. And then once we were in, he would take it and put his in. So there are 17 of these, I think, through here. Um, that part, once you get your rhythm down, it goes pretty fast. Um, but yeah, we were a little sore the next day on our, in our back muscles having to lift those guys up. So once the bows were in, then we got to start on the purlins. So the purlins are those, like I said, those long poles that run the whole length of the greenhouse. There are five sets of them, two on each side and one on the roof. Again, it's pretty simple. They come in like 12 foot length sections. So Atlas does a great job of giving you little um, tips on what to do. So what we did was we laid the purlins along the base of the greenhouse. So all along the side, and then we took a Sharpie and marked where the purlin lined up with the bows. So that way we could then disassemble it and then piece by piece, take them up, hold them up. And there are marks on these bows that have a line with a P. So the P means purlin. So you take your purlin up again, Jerry and Andrew were taking turns on the ladders and screwing those in. I was their assistant handing everything up to them between the clips and the screws and the, 
and the pipes and um, so they were going up and down on the ladders a lot. So we've got those all in and then the last thing was, the last one to do was the roof purling and that was a little interesting. Um, Andrew was not here, his sister got married so he was <laughs> probably enjoying the rest and doing all the wedding festivities. So Sarah was here helping us and this is the one because the peak of this greenhouse, I mean, it's pretty tall. Would you say, Jerry, it's 16? Probably 16 feet high. Um, and Jerry's right around six feet. So even with, you know, a tall ladder, it was really hard for him to stretch because you have to get that, um, that angle on it to really get those screws in. So we tried the ladder for a couple of bows and then we said forget this and so then we got the bobcat out and I put him in the bucket and lifted him up and was able to take him down the whole length of the greenhouse while he was screwing in the roof purlins. It's really interesting to know so when you're doing let's back up just a minute Jerry so when you're doing the um the outside on these edge pieces, you've got to make sure that your purlins do not stick out on that last bow because that's going to be covered in plastic. And over time, if your purlins are sticking out, then it will rub a hole and it will break your plastic, which of course in a greenhouse, that is not what you want. So the purlins have to be flush with these bows. Um, and even on that very top one, that top purlin rests on top of the greenhouse. So you have the bow and then the purlin sits on top of it, except for the two ends. It actually goes underneath the bow and is flush. So again, there's no rub on the plastic. They think of everything. So the purlins were up. Once we got those up, poor Jerry's shoulders and arms were killing him. Just, you know, just the force. It was really hard to get those screws to go through that steel. And it was interesting because some of them would kind of go in a little easier and other ones were, they were a booger and he was really having to work it. So we got the purlins up and then we came along and did the trusses. So there are trusses every other bow throughout the greenhouse. So there are eight of them in total. The trusses are all one piece, so they came pre-assembled. So all we have to do was to um, get on the ladders once again. It was Jerry, Sarah, and I all on the ladders. On the ends, we would lift them up. We got our system going, um, and then we had to use clamps to get them all clamped in, tighten everybody up, and then, of course, when you're going through, you have to make sure that those trusses are level going across. That's what those arms are for, the kind of those V arms. That's where you can level up those trusses. And so once all that is in, it really just tightens up the whole greenhouse. There's um, where before when the bows were just in by themselves, they had a lot of give and a lot of wiggle in them. Now it is really, really secure. Um, you can't do much wiggling. We do have on each of the corners, these are wind braces. Um, just again, it just gives a whole nother support and structure to the greenhouse. Interestingly enough, I know if you will remember, we are in North Carolina, a zone 7B. Both of these greenhouses that we have are actually rated for heavy snow. And you may be thinking, Jimmy, what in the world? Like if we're lucky, we may get a couple of inches of snow in a season. But last year when we were picking out this greenhouse, Jerry was talking to the guys over there at Atlas and they recommended that we do a really a snow arch support greenhouse because of all the hanging baskets that we will hang from the trusses, the purlins, and all throughout the greenhouse. Because if you imagine, you know, we have, a, you know, I don't know, a couple of hundred hanging baskets hanging from the roof, and those are really heavy, especially when they're watered. So you've got to have structurally a lot of support to hold all of those hanging baskets. So if we ever do get a big, huge blizzard here in North Carolina, no worries on these greenhouses. They will be just fine. Um, so what is next? Next up will be that we have to frame the end wall. So both the front and the back, um, this is where it has a, it will have a wood frame to it. So Jerry has to spec all that out, get that built. 
Um, we've talked about this before. The existing greenhouse has a 16 foot wide roll up door. So it's nice and big that you can just kind of drive through and you can roll it up with you know the seasons. This one will be different because it will have an eight foot wide sliding barn door for a lack of a better word. So Jerry's already put a pin in here. We are dead center. So this door will be eight feet long and it will slide on a track whichever way we want to slide it. Um, so that will have a door here. This will be the only door. Um, we're not going to have shutters on this greenhouse because again, if it gets too hot, the sides will roll up and cool it off. This will be a heated greenhouse. So we will heat um, this as soon as the plants come in, the end of January, um, February, they will be heated so they can grow and be nice and happy. So we have got to hurry up and get this done. So the, the end wall will be framed out and then along each of the sides, we will run, attach a track that the plastic can attach to. And then once we're framed in, we have the two tracks on the sides, then we can put plastic in or on the greenhouse and start to get it, get it sealed in. That's what we're really aiming for is to get those, the plastic on so that way, if it's cold, rainy, we'll be inside and out of the winter wetness because here in North Carolina, we are infamously wet in the winter and we want to get out of that as fast as we can. But here it is just, you know, the first couple of days in January. We haven't even been into a whole week of January yet. And Jerry and I were looking through some pictures. This time last year, we were just getting the four corner post in the ground on the existing greenhouse. We were in red mud. It was, it was not a lot of fun, but it was a lot of character building, shall we say. Um, so we feel like we're about like about three weeks ahead of schedule where we were on this one, which is great. The faster we can get this done, the sooner we can get plants in here and rocking and rolling and get them into your hands. Of course, we will keep you updated on all of the progress with this greenhouse. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day and we will see you in the next video. Bye friends.